Tonight would have been the Thurman Munson dinner in New York City. Uh, always well attended. Uh, it's a great dinner. Diana Munson has kept her husband's legacy alive. This uh, is the 41st annual Thurman Munson Award dinner, um, but it's being done virtually this year. Now, if you want to watch it, starting at about 6 o'clock, you go to the ahrcfoundation.org, and they're going to stream it live. So some of the winners of awards uh, today, Gio Urshel of the Yankees, Michael Conforto of the Mets, Pudge Rodriguez, Harry Carson, Alyssa Nair, uh, just some that are going to be honored with the Thurman Munson Award. And our next guest is also being honored and, and coming off just an unbelievable 60-game season where he led the major leagues in home runs, Luke Voigt, and he's nice enough to join us now. Luke, it's Michael, Don, and Peter. How you doing today? What up, boys? How we doing? Uh, doing good great. to hear from you guys. Good to hear from you. Luke, have you given yourself time to sit back and be proud of what you did last year? I mean, does an athlete think like that? Because, I mean, to hit 22 home runs in 60 games and lead the majors, it's just phenomenal. And a lot of people don't realize it, but you weren't exactly healthy toward the end of it with the foot issue that you had. So have you been able to admire the work that you've done? You know, when you get, you know, back home and, you know, after I got everything done to my foot at the end of the season, it, you know, it's nice to sit on for a couple of days. But, you know, I got right back in there, man. And um, it was a fun year. And, you know, obviously I wanted to keep it going, you know, you know, beat the Rays and move on to the next round. But, you know, there's just a better, you know, sweet taste in our mouth. And, you know, this is my third year with the team and third year time losing in the playoffs. And it's just been frustrating, man. And, um mm. So, you know, that's kind of the saltier taste, but, you know, it's a lot of fun, and, you know, it's, it, I just keep improving every year, and that's the goal every year for me, and, you know, um, take the positives, but, you know, a lot to grow on with it, too. Now, if you want to have fun with the math, extrapolate your season out to 162 games, you hit over 60 home runs and 150 RBIs. Now, that might be a bit much, but do you think about what this season would have been had it been a full year? For sure. But, you know, it didn't happen. So, I mean, I uh, I did the best I could to stay in shape, you know, be prepared and, you know, hope that there was going to be a season and then there being one. And, you know, I was ready to go. And, you know, that's all I can really do. And, you know, you're hoping that our guys are doing the same thing at their houses. And I know a lot of guys are limited in, you know, the things they could do, you know, depending on where they were at. So um, I knew what my job was. Um, so, and I, you know, I think that's why I benefited from having a really good season. How how pumped up were you, Luke, when it was finally announced that the Yankees were keeping DJ and signed him to a six-year deal? He actually called me right before he was about to sign, and um, I was so happy for him. We talked for like 15, 20 minutes on the phone about, uh, you know, how I wanted to be a Yankee so bad and, um, you know, finish out, you know, possibly his career here. And, you know, he wants to win, man. The guy's uh, got probably one of the best routines in baseball. Um, you know, he never shows emotion. He uh, He wants to win. And uh, I think that's what the pinstripes and, you know, Yankee Nation want in a player. And, you know, we're getting the perfect player, man. I mean, there's a reason we call him the machine. On the flip side of that co coin, um, uh, Masahiro Tanaka is no longer with the Yankees. What did he mean to the organization and that locker room? And, and how do you feel about seeing him go back to Japan? Uh, it's, you know, it's really sad. The guy was a great guy, always fun to be around. Um, he could always count on him being out there on the fifth day and, you know, uh, that dude would go out there, you know, it didn't matter if you get up a couple runs or no runs, you know, he, uh, he was a sound assassin out there and, uh, he, uh, <laughs> he gave us everything he had, but, you know, I heard that he had 99 wins in Japan and, uh, all I needed was one more to get a hundred. And, um, I know he, I mean, you know, he made really good money over here and he had a great career, you know, could go down and, you know, as a, you know, one of the best Yankee pitchers, um, and, you know, you hope for the best for him, and, you know, gets to go home to his family and stuff. You know, it's crazy times right now with this pandemic, and, um, you know, I wish the best. You know, if this wouldn't have been this year, I think he would have got another chance. And, obviously, there's problems with his injuries and, you know, his elbow and stuff like that. But, you know, I would I would love to have that guy on the mound in a playoff game any day, you know, any time of the year. You know, I heard the frustration in your voice when you talked about coming up short again, Luke, and we talk a lot about it on this show about – What's what? Why has that been the case here uh, during the off season? Have you been able to put a finger on exactly what went wrong? Uh, we didn't hit with runners on in the playoffs, man. We didn't give up a big hit. Um, you know, I think when we had to make a big out too, we didn't get the big outs. 
It wasn't a timely hitting, man. It's uh, frustrating because we had plenty of opportunities, you know, me included. Um, you know, I think the only person, you know, that really did a great job was G, and the rest of us kind of, uh, you know, struggled to find ways to get on. And when we did, you know, the guys behind us weren't picking each other up. So uh, it was frustrating. Um, but, you know, it's good uh, to get everyone healthy again. You know, I think injuries caused a lot of problems with our, you know, with our pitching and our hitting, too. Uh, I think we could have been in a better situation going into the playoffs if we would have been more healthier. But, you know, that's an excuse, and obviously injuries are going to be a part of the game. But, um Timely hitting, man. That's what yeah. that's what uh, gets you championships. Tom, with Luke Voigt, the major league's home run leader in 2020 as we get ready for 2021 season. Uh, when I watch you, Luke, I, 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 it's just an incredible story because with the Cardinals, you really never got the chance. And then the Yankees make the trade, and you get the chance, and you've done everything with the chance. And I just wonder, and I wonder if you you can help us with this, how many Luke Voits are there that never ever get the chance and never get a chance to show how great they could be? Yeah, I mean, even last year is even worse because there's a lot of guys that were probably on Double A, maybe Triple A, on the cusp of possibly getting a chance, and you know they might not ever have a job again. And yeah. it's uh, really sad because this would have happened to me five years ago. You know, you probably would have never heard of me or knew who I was because you know I was one of those guys that was you know, on the cusp of getting a big league invite and a chance to kind of show what I got, you know, and maybe make the team or whatever. And um, I, I feel bad because there are so many guys. You know, I I saw a stat that I was the first home run or uh, I was like the latest draft pick to win the home run, you know, king. And um, that's it's, – it's sad, man, because obviously – don't get me wrong. There's a reason guys go in the first round and stuff. And um, – but there's also reasons that guys get a chance to get drafted, and, you know, teams never know what a guy's, you know, work ethic's like, what his personal personality is like, and, you know, how bad, you know, guys want to make it to the big league and have success and, um, you know, prove people wrong. Were so there ever players, you know, kind of Luke, were there ever players you played alongside of who you were just like, oh, this guy's awesome. I, I'm, I wish I could play as well as this guy. And then you just saw it never happen for them. They never got the, the big opportunity. Yeah, I mean, you see these guys just get tagged with, um, you know, prospects. You know, they, they're they this second-round kid, you know, 18 years old, and, you know, they they get to that low A and high A, and you're just, you know, they have all the five to a player, have all the time in the world, and they just – they've never failed. And when they fail, they, they kind of lose it mentally, and this game is 95% mental, you know, 95% mental, and, you know – you just can't get there on tools, and I think you see that a lot. And um, I think you have to learn and mature and, you know, want to learn and get better, not just mentally but physically. And, um, you know, you just don't see guys progress when, um, you know, they run a 6260 and they can have, you know, lightning pop, you know, they can, you know, glide and have the best arm in baseball, and they just fall off the place of the earth. DJ LeMay, you mentioned, uh, just loved it here and wanted to be here through the end of his career. You have spoke glowingly about what it is to be a Yankee. You were both on different teams and different organizations. Luke, can you articulate what it, what it what's different about being a Yankee? Why is it that some players just love it so much and don't want to be anywhere else? Um, I think it's just the way they take care of us, the, the leadership in the locker room, and um, uh, and, then, and obviously the, the fans are the biggest part. Um, there's nothing like it. You know, especially uh, when we get to playoff time and, you know, they love you, man. And uh, especially if you uh, have some success, you know, they want to – you keep making more and more fans. And, you know, it's obviously not just New York. It's all over the country and the world that people are watching every day, you know, rooting for you and wanting to win. And, you know, it's it's been too long since we've, uh, you know, obviously held up the trophy and we need to get back to where uh, we used to be and, you know, get number 28 back to New York. But – there's nothing like it, man. I, you know, I wish a lot of guys got to experience it. And, um, you know, I had no idea coming over here from St. Louis what it was going to be like. You know, it was kind of intimidating with all those guys in the locker room. But um, it's, uh, they took me in like family, and, you know, I love it here. What's Luke, the Munson Award mean to you, Luke? Say it again. What's the Munson Award mean to you? 
Um, you know, it's even more, you know, uh, better this year because, you know, it's CAHRC and, you know, they help with disabilities and, you know, helping those kids get to better places. And, you know, my little sister's disabled too. So uh, it means a lot that they're out there helping a lot of, you know, people in all five boroughs, uh, you know, with, uh, you know, getting better with, you know, treatment needs and, you know, living in different residencies and workshops and schools. So it's, uh, it's, uh, it means a lot from the heart, um, you know, because I've, you know, have gone through some stuff with my sister too. So uh, it's an uh, awesome award, and you know, obviously it's a huge honor with the uh, you know, guys like CC, Roger, you know, Dee Dee, and Hart Gary, and you know, obviously there's a bunch of Mets that have won it too. So it's a, uh, it's a, uh, it's a great honor to be a part of those guys in, in good company. Well, I'll tell you what, Luke, I, I don't know the next time I'll actually see you, but I'll be in the booth looking forward to announcing the games. Glad that your foot's okay, and congratulations on a great 2020 and uh, hopefully better success even in 2021. I appreciate it. Yeah, it'd probably be nice to get you out of Yankee Stadium and actually get to go somewhere this year, huh? But, uh, you yeah. know what? I wouldn't um, even have minded to be in Buffalo last year. I, I, I just wouldn't have minded. I really wouldn't have. It would have been nice. And, and Luke, Luke, I got to ask you before you go, too. I saw you tweeted the other day, raise the flag, let's go Bucks. You a big Bucks fan? What's, what's your plan for the weekend? Oh, I'm all in the Bucks. I moved down to Tampa this offseason, and, uh, you know, it's been a huge roar down here. It was a huge, huge Bucks. Uh, you know, fan going on, and you know, I got some Bucks gear now, and because um, I lost the Rams, man, I'm from St. Louis, so I needed a team, and wow, um, I'm all on. So it's hard to bet against Brady, and I'll never, 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 ever bet against them. And but it'll be fun, man. I'm Mahomes the beast, and um, I hope it's just a high-scoring shootout, you know, two-point game. Now you you got some connections, Luke. I mean, are you going to be able to get into that 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 game? This, I guess twenty thousand people will be allowed, right? Yeah, if I want to spend like forty five grand, I can get into the game. But I ain't got <laughs> yeah, that. you don't need that. You got a nice TV. <laughs> exactly. I can spend that money. I can spend a couple hundred bucks on some nice steaks and uh, watch it on my TV. So, good stuff. Congratulations on the award tonight, and uh, I uh, I'll wave to you from the press box. Thanks, Luke. Yeah, let's just hope we start on time. All right, guys. Yeah, that'd, be that'd be Take great. That'd be great. Take care.